section of East Texas is sponsored by Valorosa Designs and Gallery in Tyler's Bergfeld Center. Now let's welcome your host and co-host of the Art Connection of East Texas, Nita Fran Ward and Cindy Trimble. Good morning. We at are so happy to be here this morning. What a glorious morning, and we get to see the sun, and so that makes us happy. You're smiling, Cindy. You like the sun. Well, I was going to say, your <laughs> smile is like the sun. And <laughs> Tiffany, you too. Bright uh, light we, here in the studio. And we are so happy to have with us Tiffany Jahorik from the Longview Museum of Fine Arts, and we are here to talk about the Blue Dog and uh, the Roderick show that's going on at the Longview Museum. And so we were just laughing because we all have on earphones that are the color of the blue dog so we look like we have on blue dog's ears this morning jack i wish you could see us because we really are cute this morning with our blue dog ears on well and i made sure i had my blue mascara on just that little yes, touch and your blue top so you just look great it's all in blue but it's a bright sunny day and we're so happy to be here with everyone uh, we always like to start off by thanking our sponsors mm -hmm. of yes. the art connection of east texas uh, valorosa gallery and designs thank you always uh, first and foremost, and Brad Bergfeld of the uh, insurance agency there here at the Bergfeld Center. We thank you for being a sponsor. And last week's guest was um, Tracy Brevard of the Gold Leaf Gallery, and they've been a sponsor since day one. Wasn't she delightful? Oh, absolutely so delightful, delightful and fun, just a bright light. And also, too, at the Bergfeld Center, we have Carla Sali of the Silver Lining Antiques and Royal Passage of the Antique Gifts. And starting on Tuesday, you'll definitely want to make a tour to the Bergfeld Center. Silver Lining is celebrating a third anniversary, and they're going to be having a big sale that starts on Tuesday. And they have great little knickknacks. Oh, I was in there, and you know what? I've already bought some champagne flutes, and I'm going back in for Waterford, so I'm really excited. I told them, anytime you have a piece of Waterford, come in and call me. That's the only thing I collect, that and rabbits. I'm starting to collect decanters <laughs> for all my oils and potions and uh -huh. things. So oh, they have some really pretty ones. You need to, you need to go buy. Absolutely. And uh, we just have a fun time this morning planned. Jacques Rodrigue from uh, New Orleans is going mm -hmm. to be calling yes. in. He is George Roderick's son, and, and he will be calling in in a few minutes, and we're going to interview him, and that will be a really, really informative time for you because if you are interested in art and you are interested specifically in art education, this is going to be a very informative time to talk with him. Mm -hmm. All right. And good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the times uh, that one of the things we love to talk about is how we educate uh, about art. And one of our main focuses has been, Tiffany, to talk about our museums because we believe very much, Cindy and I, that our museums are such a tremendous place in our community to record and give the opportunity for our young people specifically to see the culture of our areas. And art is a reflection of the culture of an area. And uh, we we want to talk this morning, and one of the things I do want to ask you is what kind of summer programs do you have at your Longview Museum, and if you have a moment to talk about that. We do. We have some great summer uh, camps this uh, summer. So from, from 1030 to 230, they can take drawing, they can take introduction to clay, hand building, a painting mini camp. We have some night classes, too, that are offered uh, that are involving uh, welding and metal sculpture. Uh, a mixed media, uh, acrylic, more acrylic, it, it, watercolor mini camp, and we're even having an introduction to glazing and bisque wear. So it's just there's a little something for everyone, and yes. the ages are uh, 14 and up or 6 to 12, so the classes have different ranges, and we're always open to new ideas sure. of classes. So if you're interested, you don't hear what you'd like to take, please mm -hmm. call uh, Paula Davis, is our art education director, and she schedules those things, but always looking for new things. We also have our little Picassos on Saturday, and that's like 3 to 5, and it's, I think, $20, and they'll just do some kind of fun little neat project, and it's once a month on Saturdays. Um, that's we, great. We just had uh, an acrylic painting class by Sharon Grimes that was fantastic, had about 10 students in there, um, and those are like from 9 to 3 p.m., uh, 
So we're constantly adding more classes, doing different mm -hmm. things. So I think this is the first time we've actually done a summer mini camp. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. I'm personally interested because my daughter and her husband have just moved to Spring Hill. Yes. And I wanted to find out from you what, what's available so she will know because she always targets that kind of thing for them during the summer. Scott has taken a job in human resources at Longview ISD. Yes. And so I'm really interested in them immersing themselves within your, well, your actually, offerings. Well, actually, one of our instructors is Jeff Hall, and he teaches sculpture at Longview High School. Okay. Well, so. I'll have to tell, yeah. tell Scott about that. My father's a welder, and, and my young niece is 15, and she started taking welding classes and enjoying it. So. Bill is a welder, too, and that's very artistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have a potter that's an, our artist in residence, and he's amazing. Uh, we have a kiln. We do lots of things there. Uh, anyway, the... Our Artworks Creative Learning Center is kind of attached. I mean, uh -huh. the museum has over 15,000 square feet. We really are a jewel kind of hidden yes, upside. Yes, you are. Yes, and, you are. Uh, so you have your own pottery area in a kiln. Yes, we do. We do. Wow. Wow. Um, and we just opened up a lecture hall, so it's a place for it seats, seats I think, 120. Uh, you can bring in more chairs, fit a few more people mm -hmm. in. So, so you can have do, TED Talks. Yes, we can have <laughs> TED Talks. We certainly could. And uh, so during the summer mini camp, if there's an artist, if we're kind of trying to replicate something, we can go in there and show them a little film. We're asking them to bring a lunch, uh, or we can order them a lunch for the day. So lots of fun activities yes. for the summer. And Cindy, why don't you talk a moment about what Tyler is doing, because the museum here pretty much mirrors that they yes. offer different things but it's wonderful that our museums have summer programs certainly you'll want to uh, absolutely reach out to the Tyler Museum of Art uh, there's summer art camps they have camps uh, for ages 6 to 8 9 to 12 then also 13 and up and your classes range from action through art um, kinetic art that moves you and let's go Lego that's kind of be, so fun that's, that's the one I want to go do <laughs> uh -huh. so definitely reach out to the Tyler Museum of Art and I'm really excited to hear with uh, Jacques Rodrigue a little bit later mm -hmm. as an advocate for implementing the visual arts into the education of children yes. it's, it's so important. amazing what yes. that foundation yes. is doing I'm, I'm such a big fan I actually asked ask Jacques because they do the A plus schools I know he's going to talk about that and they've trained over 8,000 faculty in how to teach art in every subject, English, math, yes. science, social studies. Performing arts, yeah. the drama, so I, I said, uh, dancing. I said, when, uh, I said, could you bring that program to Texas? And he said, Texas is a really big state. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we can hope. Our girls right. well, the greater the but challenge, what you do the is you eat the pie one piece at a time. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we'll do our little part here. And we're hoping to actually... Um, work with the Tyler Museum of Art some more and try to do uh -huh. some collaborative programs. Wouldn't that Haven't be a got, fun thing? I think so. I've met Chris, the director over there, mm -hmm. and um, it's on my list to do to get back with him <laughs> and see what we can do. My niece, Kelsey, Kelsey Bailey, is their new education okay. program there. And uh, so I, I really encourage you to talk with them because they they would love to collaborate, I'm sure. I know. Because well, we're, we're, we're one big family. We are. We're uh -huh. all about connecting each other. <laughs> Art Art of East Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and what, one of the things, Tiffany, too, that we want to talk about this morning is what does it take for a museum and what is the process? And so if you can speak to that just for a moment, we've got a few minutes before our first break, of what does it take and how do you get started focusing in on a particular show? Why do you choose that? And kind of start walking us through it, and we'll visit that later uh, throughout the interview. Um. I think all museums have a similar uh, process, but sometimes different. Um, we have an exhibits committee, and so we review that. And every museum has a number of shows that they do. We have a permanent collection with over 600 mm -hmm. pieces that we rotate in our main gallery. However, this show, permanent collection is in the back, and the Rodrigue show has taken over the whole place. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. in all the galleries. But uh, And so in, the, in our museum's case, Usually we have a show January, February. It's in the past been perspectives. It's kind of an invitational photography show. Then we'll have our student show in March. And I know the Tyler Museum also has their student show kind of at the same time frame. Uh, then April, April, May, June, we'll have another show like this, Rodrigue. So we're actually working on what that show will be next uh, for next year. <clears throat> 
And then the next show that we have will be the Texas Regional Artists Show. And uh, and then the last one this year, we'll have the John Sexton Photography Show. So every, you kind of look at what your year is like and, mm -hmm. and try to have a variety. So you and might you, want to have photography, sculpture, sure. painting, what you know. And you probably plan a year out, don't you? Yeah, we yeah. actually like to start planning. Uh, you can plan a year to three years in sure. advance. Some of those bigger sure. shows require. And so we've had uh, the Rodrigue Show on the books for a while. Okay. And I know... Uh, uh, the staff had been talking and talking to the Rodrigue Foundation for years, and it finally just worked out. And that's this why great. we got so lucky to get them yes. here. Because this show doesn't go. It only goes, I think their goal is two museums a year. So the fact that it's here, you need to get that's over and big. see it. Yes. <laughs> and it goes through the 25th. We need to take a break, and uh, we'll be right back. Yay. Advertiser Directory at KTBB.com. KTBB.com. Hosted by Group M7. Owning a piece of past times, a true antique reflecting quality of craftsmanship and beauty completes the decor of any home. You can find these treasures at two shops at Bergfeld Center. Silver Lining Antiques, a collection of shops, and Royal Passage Antiques and Gifts, both located in Bergfeld Center, offer the finest collection of antiques in East Texas. Both antique shops are full of special pieces thoughtfully displayed. Silver Lining Antiques and Royal Passage Antiques. Find them both in Tyler's Bergfeld Center. It starts as a trickle, but then the seal in the pipe gives way and you've got a mess on your hands. So when the water rushes in, keep the damage out by calling SurfPro of Tyler at 903-561-0168. That's where you'll find the specialist with the training to help you make sure your property is dry the first time. So when water damage strikes your home and business, strike back by calling the cleanup specialist the insurance industry has trusted for more than 40 years. That's SurfPro of Tyler at 903-561-0168. Helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened. At SurfPro of Tyler, no job is too big and no question is too small. So when fire or water damage strikes your home or business, call on SurfPro of Tyler at 903-561-0168. That's where you'll find a team of specialists that's faster to any size disaster. So when the things that matter most are on the line, make sure SurfPro of Tyler is too by calling 903-561-0168. At SurfPro of Tyler, Helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Hi, John Bass from Majors Pharmacy. Woo, son, come see us at Majors Pharmacy because, brother, they got it all. When you don't feel well and need a prescription filled quickly, the chain pharmacies will make you wait. Majors Pharmacy won't. Bring your prescription to Majors Pharmacy, and in most cases, they'll fill it and have you on your way in 15 minutes or less. Majors Pharmacy accepts most major insurance plans. Majors Pharmacy, South Broadway at Shelley Drive, across from Wagner Cadillac, and online at MajorsPharmacy.com. As a family-owned business, the Bergfeld Insurance Agency values treasured heirlooms. The agency has been passed down through generations, so they understand the importance of insuring family history. Trust the Bergfeld Agency to insure your collectible art and precious jewels. Homeowner policies may not cover your collection. So call today for a free quote. They're an independent agency offering customized policies for multiple carriers for home, auto, RV, and business. Bergfeldagency.com. Replace the parts of your home exterior that are made of wood with today's vinyl siding and you'll never paint again. With the vinyl, you don't ever have to paint it. That's Chris Chambliss of Bullard Siding in Tyler. The extent of your maintenance is washing it from time to time when it looks like it's getting dirty, but you really don't have to do anything to it at all. Today's vinyl siding is nothing like the siding of days gone by. To the untrained eye, it's hard to distinguish from wood. It typically looks a lot better than wood, actually, because it doesn't have the inconsistencies in it that wood does. You're not going to have any warping, um, and obviously the paint doesn't flake or anything like that. Termites obviously can't eat it. You know, it's just a far superior product than what it really is. We have jobs that, you know, they've been up for 20 plus years and still look brand new. For vinyl siding products that will make your home look better and last longer, let Bullard Siding be your home improvement resource. Bullard Siding, more than 70 years of East Texans taking care of other East Texans. Online at BullardSiding.com. Bullard Siding. Hi, John Sims inviting you to join me each Sunday morning on KTBB for In Focus. You'll hear from representatives in various sectors of community service, all of them working to make the Tyler Longview, East Texas area a better place for everyone. This week we'll sit down with Aaron Wright and Libby Simmons for a look at the Tyler Area Builders Association's 63rd Annual Parade of Homes coming up June 4th through 12th. 
That's In Focus, Sunday mornings at 9.30, right here on your only local news radio, 97.5 FM KTBB and KTBB.com. Hey, Tyler Longview, it's your friend Sean Hannity here. Join me weekday afternoons 2 to 5, right after Rush, on your only local news radio, 97.5 KTBB FM. That wonderful music you're hearing is by a local artist named Alex Ruiz, and he's going to be our guest on Saturday, June 11th, oh. and his band is called Starsteed. We had them perform at the Bergfeld yes, Spring Fling. and it was great. I enjoy their music. <laughs> I'm going to go down the list so all of you will kind of know. I Hold on just a moment. Jacques on the phone. Oh, we have all Jacques. All right, we are ready. <laughs> Yay. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I bet you are, too. <laughs> you have a great day. Great life, don't you? You know, it's, we're so lucky. Um, Dad left behind a, a huge legacy and, and a lot for us to do and, and share with the world. Jock, we are so happy to have you call in this morning. And sitting with me is this lovely lady, Tiffany, from the Longview Museum of Fine Arts. And with me also is Cindy, the co-host. And so we are really pleased to have you call in and take time out of your world. But... I've been doing quite a bit of research about your foundation, and so what what I would love to do is just let you talk. We listened to your TED Talk and was very uh, impressed with, with what you're doing. As an educator, as an art teacher myself, I, I am right on board with what you're doing and what you're talking about. So you just take the, take the stage right now and you just move forward. Fantastic. So... You know, we started the George Rodriguez Foundation of the Arts in 2009, uh, really because of our relief efforts that Dad did um, first after 9-11 and then after Hurricane Katrina. He did a, a series of prints called Blue Dog Relief that raised funds for those efforts. And Wasn't it $2.5 million? <clears throat> Correct, yeah, it raised, yes. raised about $3 million. Yes. And at some point you just get out of this, relief mode and you're you know want to get back to a sense of normalcy and and maybe some programs that have a potential for long-term effect mm -hmm. and it was actually the students and teachers across the world that had been painting blue dogs and sending them to us that inspired us to investigate uh, arts and education and it's important in the development of our youth and what we found out was you know, a lot of people think the arts are just about fluff, um, that it's an extra thing. If you have time for them, you can try to get to it in the school day. Uh, but all the research shows the complete opposite. Um, students with arts exposure uh, score higher on tests. They have fewer discipline problems, uh, higher attendance. And that's why we, we wanted to make sure that we um, did things that kept the arts in schools in a meaningful way. So as you have moved forward this with this, you started this in 2009, you started doing your research, and you have moved into Arkansas, Louisiana, and uh, the other state was, there were three states. So, yeah, so that's... Uh, um, A-plus schools. Biggest, yeah, our, our biggest, most um, ambitious program is called Louisiana A-plus schools. Mm -hmm. um, it's a program that actually started in North Carolina 20 mm -hmm. years ago okay, and then um, spread to Oklahoma and Arkansas. And we, I visited my first A-plus school about five years ago in Oklahoma and just fell in love with the way these schools operated. You, you walked in, there was art everywhere, it was loud, um, and these students just had this, this self-confidence about them. Um, because they had all of these art programs in their in their traditional classroom, so it's it's an arts integration model uh -huh. where you teach uh, all traditional subjects using some art form. And the kids so actually enjoy coming to school. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the what a teachers concept. like come going to school too. It's I mean it's it's so fun, um, and it's you know using in a science class some type of visual art or in an English class using music and it just it just gets to the way students learn best um, and and so uh, 
we wanted to start a Louisiana network of our own. Um, and so we worked with the other states to help form our network, and now we're uh, up to 18 schools in Louisiana. We've trained the entire faculties of those schools in these teaching methods, about 700 teachers, um, impacting the lives of about 5,000 students every day. It's going to change things. Well, and I, appreci- I appreciate it, too, how in your speaking to that, that instead of training our kids to become test takers, that we teach them about creative solutions. And I, I really appreciate what you had to say about that, too. And they will they will do better on their test, as you have spoken to, because they they really are ingesting into themselves all of that information, even though they're doing it through the arts. When you saw the, the, the school there in Oklahoma, that kind of spurred you on to say, this is what I want to do, and I want to do it in a bigger way through the foundation. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. I mean, with Dad, uh, we visited so many schools all across the country and doing projects. But So he I'd was involved. This was before his death. So he was mm-hmm. actually involved with you with this. Oh, very much so. I um, see. Um, you know, we got so many chances to visit so many great schools, and Dad would um, do an art lesson and, and paint uh, for them. Then we'd read our children's books, and then Dad would actually sit down and paint blue dogs with the students. And he just, he really just loved doing that. And um, you know, it was so inspiring. And that's, you know, he he loved this idea of of keeping the arts in schools in Louisiana. When I when I listened to the TED talk, I noticed that there were so many different TED talks, also on that same uh, page on my phone that people can go to other other things and and listen to other people that have these ideas and you mentioned a particular man who is out of England will you talk a moment about that and how his talking about creativity uh, spurred you on yes so his name is uh, Ken Robinson he's got uh, most viewed TED talks um, of all of the website and he um, his focus is on creativity and how uh, you know students who have this creativity, um, you know, can be successful for their entire lives because they can adapt and change. And we don't know what the world's going to look like in 20 years. So how can we teach them um, to prepare for that, uh, other than giving them the skills to think for themselves and to adapt? And that's what the arts and, and teaching creativity can do. Yes, it does, and it hits that right-left brain that you you talked about also. And I, I'm a big proponent of that, and I think all three of us sitting here at this table mm-hmm. with these blue dog ear, ears on, <laughs> I wish you could see us. We have, our, we have on earphones that are all blue, just the color of blue dog, and we just look pretty cool this morning. <laughs> you would love this. <laughs> Well, we're so excited. Uh, Jacques is actually coming to the Longview Museum of Fine Arts on June 18th. It's Father's Day weekend, and we're going to have a family day there. And Jacques is going to give a gallery talk. Uh, and he did this for our members and guests at our opening on April 9th. And so we're excited to offer that to the public free of charge. So we'll have fun things for the kids to do, some activity tables with coloring and painting and uh, creating their own blue dog. <laughs> um, and, and Jacques is going to help with that. We hope to have some food trucks and some music and uh, maybe some face painting. So please plan to come see Jacques well, and the Blue Dog. That's how we got to this point today. Uh, John David Carrasco, my friend, he's like, we're going to see Blue Dog. And that had been an inspiration <laughs> for him since the early 90s. And we had the good fortune of meeting you there mm-hmm. and uh, meeting Jacques. So it's uh, thank you very much for being here today. I love the Blue Dog eyes. I've always been very, very drawn to how he paints the eyes. And mm-hmm. one time there was a particular one I remember and the eyes were huge, and it, it looked like he had been stuck with a needle or something. <laughs> he was, the He's eyes just popped. <laughs> uh, uh, Dana, the curator for the show, was telling me, you know, if you see the first blue dog in, that he did in 1984, it, it doesn't look like the blue dog we have now. Uh-huh. Um, it he was, evolved. He's definitely evolved. <laughs> well, he's the, older. <laughs> yeah, he's older. <laughs> like me. <laughs> it was more of a uh, bluish gray fur. The uh-huh. eyes were kind of red uh-huh. and scary. And then over time, you know, George studied in the 70s when 
when Andy Warhol was mm -hmm. popular in the Campbell soup can. And so he was always thinking, what's going to be my Campbell soup can? Soup can. And when he heard uh, some guests in the opening say, what's the deal with this blue dog? He started thinking, hey, maybe there's something uh -huh, to do with this uh -huh. blue dog. And he started to make it more it's an pop icon. art. Yeah. And it, the yeah, eyes it got rounder yeah. and more circular uh -huh. and yellow uh -huh. and fr the fur got bluer and friendlier. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's, you know... I was wondering, too, Jock, you told us about how the uh, Blue Dog was inspiration from a ghost story. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so for the first uh, 25 years of Dad's career, he didn't paint dogs at all. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, but he, he knew about his... that scary dog, didn't he? <laughs> right, so he, um, he went to art school in Los Angeles, was from Louisiana, obviously. And, and when he came back to Louisiana, he wanted to capture the history of the Cajun people and their folklores and legends on canvas in order to tell their story about who they were. And so for 25 years, that's what he painted, the, the landscapes of Louisiana, the live oak trees, the bayous, the swamps, and their, their uh, legends uh, like Jolie Blonde, uh, or Evangeline, which are, we have examples of in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but one story that really stuck with him uh, through his whole life was this idea of a Lou Garou, a Cajun werewolf dog that sleeps in the cane fields, and if you're bad today, the Lou Garou will get you that night. <laughs> I'm kind scared. of a, a, a classic boogeyman story that my grandmother used to tell him uh, growing up. Sure. And so... And so in 1984, uh, Dad was commissioned to paint a book of 40 Cajun ghost stories. And he painted a painting to go with each of those Cajun ghost stories. And one of those stories was about a Lou Garou. And so how do you paint a boogeyman? Well, well, Dad always worked from old photographs and used models uh, of these in these pictures uh, for his paintings. And he, he found this little picture of his his old dog named Tiffany, and used her as this model of course. for this <laughs> werewolf dog. And you know, in every culture, I know when I moved to New Mexico, they had a woman that actually walked through, through the auroras there, and they actually had a werewolf dog that they also used against their children. So I guess this is everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, these legends, you know, they all came over from Europe. Um, you know, and with the and people, just, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. Well, Tiffany. Yes. Talk about uh, his uh, Wendy coming because I know that Jacques, you have a, a big month still there at the Museum of Art because it's not over until the 25th of June. Right. So people have a lot of time; they can still come and see, seeing you on the 18th, and then Wendy is going to be there. Yes, Wendy will be here uh, the third and fourth uh, at 11 o'clock to read "Why Is Blue Dog Blue" and talk to the children then. And then at 1:30, Wendy has this fantastic book called "The Other Side of the Painting," and it's a compilation of a lot of her blogs. Uh, so she's going to do a, a book reading and signing from that, but she's also bringing four original works from her private collection to share with the uh, public. Oh. So it's definitely going to be a, a that ha They haven't been seen that very much. haven't been seen before. That just gave me chills. Yeah, <laughs> so we're very excited to have Wendy with us. Um, I've started reading her book. I'm about halfway through. It's just so good and it... Um, She's so personable. She's such a good writer. But you learn a little bit about how she met George, mm -hmm. her love of art. She was already, mm -hmm. she had studied art and grown up with art and art books. And her. And so you get to learn about Wendy, too. Mm -hmm. So, Jacques, when you go the 18th, you're going to be there to visit with the children and also to talk with any of us who can show up that day. When when you go, what is your main focus when you start thinking about what do I want to convey when I talk to people today? Is it talk about that a little bit? So you know, for us as a family, it's, it's really important that we you know get George Rodriguez known not just as the Blue Dog guy. Mm -hmm. There's and, a story, um, but you know, the Blue Dog didn't just pop out out of thin air. It was a you know a, a thirty year progression that got mm -hmm. to the first Blue Dogs. And then the Blue Dog itself evolved over the 20, 25 years that Dad was painting it. So as much as I can um, to get people to leave the exhibit, uh, understanding the, the breadth of Dad's career and not just to pigeonhole him as 
a guy that got lucky um, just that created this this image and it took off. You know, it was it was a lot of work, and and people think that being an artist is pretty easy, um, but but I was there every day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in my house was an art gallery. Uh, in my house was the studio, and it was years and years uh, every day, hard hard work uh, to get it to this point. Um, none of this happened by accident. Success so doesn't can, come by luck, does it? Well, the definition of luck, too, is when preparation meets opportunity. So there's a lot of preparation goes into that seeming magical moment of arrival. And Cindy can speak to that because Cindy's father was an artist. He and still she, is. And is an artist. <laughs> and she lived with that same thing, Jacques, Jacques and it does in, influences everything that you think. Yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, that's why when you walk into these shows, um, we, we make a point to you walk into all Cajuns. You know, all landscapes, all these early paintings, um, because it, it shocks people sometimes. They think they're coming to a blue dog show, mm -hmm. and then they 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 wonder who who is this other artist that paints all these Cajuns. <laughs> Actually, as people have come into the gallery, I'll go. Well, it starts over here, and they go, "What?" Because the, the landscapes are the st and they're they're kind of uh, dark and have the dark shadows and the dark the oak trees, trees. The trees, and uh, people are shocked. Uh -huh. And I love the Cajuns because they. Um, I didn't know the Cajun story before uh, this exhibit, and they basically started in the 1600s and were kicked out of Nova Scotia and had to come down to New Iberia, and so it was a. a test of their courage and their survival mm -hmm. to to survive and so he paints them and they're sort of pasted on top of the landscape and they're white figures they kind of float there ghostly uh -huh. and uh, there's inner spirit uh, uh -huh. as they say uh -huh. sort of uh, lights up the page it, it's just great I've just been so um, enamored with George and the family and, and how it he all didn't works. do that by chance he did no. that because they were placed there yes they showed up on that landscape they weren't that was not from where they came, mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and that's what an artist does. Mm -hmm. He really, really is able to convey the whole story. Mm -hmm. Jacques, we are very thankful that you called in this morning. We appreciate the effort that you made, and uh, it's it's been delightful to for for me personally, and I know for others to find out more about your father and to find out what you're doing. And I really invite you to come in to Texas because. <laughs> Every child needs to have the opportunity to experience the creativity that, that's inside of them. Well, thank you so much for having me. We're, we're so excited about this exhibit uh, in Longview. I know it's been a, a long time coming, and, and it's just been wonderful to work with everyone there. And, and I can you know, tell that we've, we've discovered new fans, and, and that's what these shows are for. That's exactly right, and so put, out, put out the word about art and education. And any time you do another TED Talk, let me know because I want to listen to it, okay? <laughs> I will. <laughs> and what we're going to finish up with this morning is uh, Tiffany's actually going to talk more about what it takes to get a show into a museum uh, at the level of, of your, your father's work. So thank you again for calling in, and I will hope to see you uh, on the 18th, maybe. Yes, we'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye, right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Take us with you on your smartphone or iPad. Search KTPB in the App Store. Sponsored by Tyler Ford. You've waited months to bring it home, a beautiful painting that still takes your breath away, and you have just the right place in mind to hang it. All that's missing is a custom frame, that final detail that ties it all together. Trust your artwork to Gold Leaf Gallery. With an eye for detail and a heart for artists, Gold Leaf Gallery offers custom framing and personalized service. Gold Leaf Gallery in the French Quarter in Tyler. Framing by artists for artists. Goldleafgallery.com. Living the life of a small business owner is hard. Hi, I'm Mike Kappel, founder and CEO of Patriot Software. If you're a small business owner, I'm sure there are two things you don't have plenty of, time and money. That's why I built Patriot Software. Our payroll solution starts at just $10 a month. It's easy to use. There are no long-term contracts, and if you need help, we will help you for free. Just go to PatriotSoftware.com and enter promo code 1919, and I'll give you two months of payroll processing free. That's PatriotSoftware.com, promo code 1919.
Hi again, everybody. We have Chris Suddeth of the ARC Assurance Group with me, and we're discussing how a small business can get the right insurance policy since they're all so unique. So, Chris, how can you help? Well, Bill, because most small businesses are operated by a few owners or just one person, their time is valuable. They need an insurance agent that can understand what their risk exposures are and then research the insurance market for them to come up with a plan of protection. Is it difficult to find insurance companies that really want to cover a small business? No, actually it's quite the opposite. At ARC Assurance, we represent many top-rated insurance companies that offer a package of coverage designed for a variety of small businesses. They're looking to help these hard-working folks. So how can a small business get on board the ARC? Oh, that's the easy part. Just jump on the web and look us up at arcassurance.com. That's arcassurance, A-R-K-A-S-S-U-R-A-N-C-E.com, the ARC Assurance Group. Get on board the ARC, the ARC Assurance Group. Find them online at arcassurance.com, the ARC Assurance Group. We live in Texas. It gets hot. Window tinting is going to reduce the heat in your car tremendously. That's Dennis Mortis, owner of Stereo and Video Center of Tyler. A lot of people don't realize that their windows are just a smoke glass. They think they have window tint, but they really don't. They just have a smoke glass. Most tents are going to reduce 30 to 50 percent of heat transference into your car. Not all window tinting is the same. Stereo and Video Center installs vehicle window tinting that looks great while keeping out the heat. When you look at window tinting, especially if you look at a, an inexpensive job, they're going to use a dye film. The problem with dye films is they turn purple. But we use a metallized film. It's not going to change colors. I guarantee you'd be satisfied with ours. Stereo and Video Center of Tyler. For home entertainment, car and truck audio, window tinting, and outdoor living. On South Broadway across from Lowe's. Online at StereoVideoCenter.com. Stereo and Video Center. Water Park in Canton opens Memorial Day weekend, and it's going to be a great summer. We can't wait to splash into fun, and this summer, Splash Kingdom will have five great locations in Texas and Louisiana. We'd love you to join us this summer and be part of our safe and fun atmosphere. Right now, season passes are just $95 plus tax, and with a season pass, you can visit any of our five locations. Get tickets and information at SplashKingdomWaterPark.com. That's SplashKingdomWaterPark.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook for the latest updates and deals. So splash into summer. We open Memorial Day weekend at Splash Kingdom Water Park on I-20 in Canton. Come on! Your only local news radio is now on FM. Set a button for 97.5 KTBB-FM. Well, wasn't that fun? I just, every time I listen to the, to him talk, it just inspires me to say, whatever it takes, we need to figure out a way to get art back in our schools. Well, yes. the children many, are our future. Exactly, mm-hmm. and many schools have it, mm-hmm. but it's the smaller schools that struggle because they don't have the funds right. to have an art art program in school and we want to continue with tiffany this morning she is the interim director at longview museum of fine arts and tiffany picking back up on our conversation that we left off when jacques called in talk about and 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 let's continue to the end of the show about what you as a museum director go through and the planning that you have to do to put a show like this on the walls Well, these shows, we plan a year to three years in advance. And for a show like this, um, it's a minimum of 25,000 just to get it here. So shows, so if we wanted to bring a show in from the Smithsonian or something, it's going to have a price tag, uh, $20,000 minimum, usually. Um, And then it's shipping. So like the Blue Dog Show costs, I think, oh, $7,000 to ship. So $3,500 there, $3,500 back. It's some big paintings. (laughs) And it's got its own truck. And then you've got your insurance. And and you have insurance and all of that. It also sometimes takes special packers. And so, uh, and all the equipment to pack all that. Crating it. Crating it. Big deal. Uh, Sometimes you have to uh, actually construct crating. To, for certain pieces of art. Then you have artists that come in and the art's not framed. or And so that might be part of the agreement so that you'll have to actually have it framed. So 
anybody framed anything lightly, that's expensive. Yes, <laughs> you know? And then, um, you know, part of the mission of a museum is to educate, interpret, and not only preserve the works of art, but to educate, there's the wall texts. And you can put them on foam core, which I've learned is not my favorite thing to do because <laughs> they fall off the wall, they get bent, but there's something called gator board. Those are just all expensive, you know, that you, and you, but they're more lasting. And so you want to take time to make sure your wall texts are up there, make sure they're presentable and uh, that you're conveying what the artist's message is. And so I have loved um, volunteering over the years and working at the art museum. I've learned so much about art and it's easy for us to get in our little comfort zone and, uh, and, and uh, or you might see something on the wall an artist puts and you think, well, I would never hang that in my house. But when you hear them talk about it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can really appreciate that. My mind does not go there. Mm -hmm. And I love that someone else's mind does mm -hmm. and that they can come up with this creative expression. Um, and I have just loved learning about George Rodrigue and his desire to, um, his love of kids, his love of education, uh, his love of the Louisiana culture. And um, my parents are actually from Louisiana, so I have some, <laughs> some loves. And I was actually born in Louisiana, so I have some uh, love of Louisiana you there. You can be proud of that. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, so anyway, I would say most exhibits, if you're trying to bring in a, a quality show, somebody like a, a, a George Rodrigue, it's 25 to 30. And if you want to publicize it, so then you're talking about 40,000, 50,000. Advertising is expensive, but you mm -hmm. definitely want to get the word out. So, and you're talking a two month show. This is this actually is a three month show. Three months. Two, mm -hmm. three, almost almost total three three months. Okay, we need to take a break, and we will be right back. News Talk 97.5 FM, KTBB, with you everywhere you go at KTBB.com. KTBB.com, hosted by Group M7. Hello, this is Stephen Sluter from the Rose Spa in the Cascades. The month of April is known in the cancer community as Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Since I am a testicular cancer survivor and this subject hits close to home, we are doing a fundraiser to give to charity. During the month of April, all the proceeds from any hair treatment will be donated to the Lance Armstrong Live Strong Foundation. Join us in giving back to the cancer community by booking your hair treatment now. I'm telling you, a ribeye steak can either be a wonderful experience or a complete waste of money. Hi, this is Paul Gleiser. The ribeye, when done well, is the crown jewel of steaks. It's the most flavorful and the most tender. But there is no greater crime in all of steakdom than settling for a mediocre ribeye. If a ribeye can't be great, it shouldn't be at all. Which is why where you order a ribeye matters. In my opinion, you can do no better in East Texas than the ribeye at Keeper Saul Estates. It starts with hand-cut prime beef. Then it's expertly salted and peppered, nothing else being necessary on a prime ribeye, and then perfectly grilled. Pair this magnificent steak with a bottle of Keeper Saul's 2012 Syrah, and you'll talk about your dinner for weeks to come. It's the kind of experience you'll only get in a locally owned, family-run restaurant. So go south on Broadway to FM 344, left under the bridge a mile and a half to the Keepersall entrance gate on your left, and then follow the signs. Learn more and get reservations at Keepersall.com. Hi, this is Joe at Stonebridge Heating and Air. We get so many people asking us about the ductless mini splits. For the room additions, commercial conference rooms that are always too warm when you add 20 people. We rep Carrier, Lennox, Toshiba, Fujitsu, and Mitsubishi. As a diamond dealer for Mitsubishi, that increases your warranty to 12 years because of the extra training our company has gone through. Ducted mini splits are also very popular because we can run extra ducts to those restrooms or closets in that bonus room or home theater. Stonebridge Heating and Air. License 22357C-565-5414. When you look at the beautiful 600-acre campus of the UT Health Northeast Cancer Treatment and Prevention Center, you can't help but think of the healing power of nature. But at UT Health Northeast, it's the words we combine with nature that make the real difference. Like caring nature. Are you comfortable? Yes, thank you. Our commitment to compassionate, personalized care. Our determined nature. Uh, the tumor's been completely removed that comes from the knowledge and resources of the University of Texas system, making us the region's only university medical center. And most importantly, when it comes to cancer care, the words that often matter most are our innovative nature. So there's a new treatment and it's very promising and you're- Giving you access to the most advanced cancer treatment and prevention. 
UT Health Northeast. Healing just feels better here. See us at uthealth.org. It's time again to honor some of the best student-athletes in East Texas with the 26th annual KTBB Scholastic All-Stars team sponsored by Southside Bank, by the Kyle Lake Foundation, and by Tyler Junior College. These 22 high school senior boys and girls represent some of the best we have to offer. Each one has excelled both on the field, on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. The 2015-2016 KTBB Scholastic All-Stars include Braylon Jones, John Tyler High School, School, Tiffany Lim, Grace Community School, Zoe Rubin, Rusk High School, Caleb Seal, Brownsboro High School, Devin Smith, Gilmer High School. The KTBB Scholastic All-Stars were honored at our annual banquet on May 19th at Ricks on the Square in downtown Tyler. Please join us in congratulating the 2015-2016 KTBB Scholastic All-Stars on your only local news radio 97.5 FM KTBB and ESPN East Texas 92.1 FM. Rush Limbaugh, weekdays at 11. Set a new button for 97.5 FM, KTBB. Well, we're about ready to finish up the Art Connection of East Texas this morning, and our special guest is Tiffany Johorik from Longview. And, Tiffany, it's been wonderful getting to know you, Thank looking you at your, your really, really pretty smile and <laughs> lovely face. And I feel like we have a new friend, don't we? We do. Yes. Yes. There are no coincidences. We have a long partnership. Head. I want to talk about what's coming up in June because we're facing June right now. On Saturday, June the 4th, Jan Statman from Longview wonderful, is going to be our guest. She just brought in four beautiful beautiful paintings to Valorosa. We are happy have one to be, of hers. Uh-huh. <laughs> we are ve- thank you for saying that. We are so pleased to have her work, and I've fallen in love with Jan. And uh, Bef- Beverly Abel will be here. She will be talking about the 6 by 6 show that's coming up for Tyler Main Street Gallery. Brian Stone will be here. He will be talking about Art Connection. And uh, we have our new website up, assetnetwork.net. Please check us out. It's a beautiful uh, website. On Saturday, June the 11th, Alex Ruiz, who is uh, the band of Starsteed, and he is the young man who wrote the music that you hear for our theme song. Saturday, June 18th, we have A.C. Gentry. Oh. He is going to come I'm on. Sorry. He came into the gallery, and we sat down, had about a 30-minute visit, and he is just a sweetheart. Uh-oh. And Galen Ding- Dingler, who is also an artist in the gallery, is going to be bringing A.C. up here and going to interview both of those artists. And on Saturday, June the 25th, Cassie Edmonds will be here. Wonderful, wonderful glass artist and her father, Don Edmonds, who is an artist, and he brought in some gourds to Valorosa. And if you haven't seen his work, they are just beautiful. They are spectacular. They're wonderful. So we have a great lineup for June, and we want you to tune in. Tiffany, let's finish up talking about what's going on at Longview. All right. Well, this Friday and Saturday, you don't want to miss it. Wendy Rodrigue will be here at 11 a.m. at the Longview Museum of Fine Arts. We are on Tyler Street, not in Tyler. <laughs> but, um, and she will be reading Why is Blue Dog Blue? And Blue Dog and His Friends is another book that George uh, illustrated and wrote. And then at 1.30, she is going to, very special, bring... Um, Four original paintings that will be there and read from her book, The Other Side of the Painting, and then have a book signing. Anyway, the book is great. I've so enjoyed reading it. You really get to know... uh, you just feel like you know George and you know Wendy and and you learn a lot about art just mm-hmm. about um, the art world the Picassos of the world and she has a lot of information to share and so I can't wait to meet her and then you're going to talk about Jacques talk a minute about Jacques coming back on and the Jacques is coming back and Jacques was a big hit at our opening reception for There's our a members lot of people there. and guests mm-hmm. gosh I think we had 200 and some 250 packed. people there it was great uh, a great night and so you can all join the Longview Museum of Fine Arts, too, and you, too, can be invited to our member and guest opening receptions. But Jacques will be here uh, June 18th, which is Father's Day weekend. We're planning a lot of events. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Jacques will give a 
gallery talk, and he's got this great little system, kind of like a little karaoke machine. He walks around the gallery so and can talk about each painting as he goes. And it's great because he'll tell you the behind-the-scenes story that's not necessarily on the wall text by the painting. <laughs> and love that opportunity. And then that afternoon, he's actually going to read to the kids from Why is Blue Dog Blue? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have activity tables set up for coloring and painting. We're going to do like a mural drawing. So um, much fun. Yeah, face painting, lots of fun things. It should be a great day. So really Well, it's to about it. time for us to wrap up. Thank yeah. you, Tiffany, for being here. Having you come over was such a, a delight for us and knowing we were going to do it. I will say, we are open today on Memorial Day, and so we're open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So come see us today. And are you going to be open on Memorial Day? We actually are not open on well, Memorial and Day. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> just check it. We artist types have to but have you one day are off. open. <laughs> yes, yes, you are open today. And so, Cindy, we've well, had fun. We've always having fun. I was going to say, be sure and go to the Longview Museum of Fine Art and mention that you heard about them on the Art Connection of East Texas. Yes, please do. Thank you for tuning in, and again, thank our sponsors because we love doing this. We've been doing this three months. I was telling Cindy, March, April, and May, awesome. and we are just having a. Listen on your smartphone. Just search KTBB in the App Store. It's free. Sponsored by Tyler Ford.